battlefield of eternity. Hello and welcome back to the Nexus Gaming Series. This is the end of the Season 2 regular season for Division A. I am Bludgeon coming to you with a very important match between ODG and Reality Esports. As you can see from the standings up on your screen, this is a battle for 8th place which is important because the top eight teams will make it into the playoffs. So, the stakes are a little different for each team. The pressure is on Reality Esports here. ODG currently one point ahead of Reality in the standings, which means in order for ODG to advance, they only need to win one out of these two games in this match. They don't need to win both, they just need to win one. On the other hand, for Reality Esports, in order for them to advance and get ahead of ODG in the standings, they have to 2-0 them here. They have to win both matches. Now, if you look at those standings, you might notice that uh, if ODG only gets one point here, it's possible that the Black Hand could tie the score if they uh, win a 2-0 in their last match. However, uh, this would lead to a tiebreaker scenario, which is resolved by a head-to-head -head matchup. In week one, ODG defeated the Black Hand 2-0, which means uh, that ODG would still advance in that case. So one game, two games, it's all the same for ODG. Uh, I want to send a thanks out to Zidal, who's a Discord user, who put together some really nice graphics showing the uh, standings and matchups for Division A, I believe for some other divisions as well. Uh, so thanks to Zidal for that. All right. The coin flip happened. It determined that ODG would get first map ban and the map pick for game number one. ODG uh, banned away Towers of Doom. Reality Esports responded by banning Dragonshire. And as you can see, the pick for uh, game number one is Battlefield of Eternity. And that was selected by ODG. The bans and picks have already been happening here. We can see a first ban Uther against Reality Esports. Not wanting to deal with that extremely strong and versatile support. Perhaps something in that easy stun they don't want to face. We'll see what the rest of their composition looks like. And we see uh, Cho Gaul being banned. Well, which one is it? It's actually Gaul uh, has been banned. So uh, Reality not wanting to go up against that two-headed giant. So we're not going to see that, but we are going to see an Anna this game, or Anna, I think it's actually uh, supposed to be pronounced. So we're going to see an Ana. That's pretty interesting. Uh, I think this is the first game I will cast, which includes uh, that newest support hero, which has been added to the game. A uh, very interesting champion or hero design. Um, versatile. She is a healer, but she uses skill shots to heal. So communication with the team is going to be really important to make sure that uh, your healing target stands still long enough for you to hit them with the shot, or at least you know where they're going so you can tag them with that. The other really important and interesting thing that she brings to the table is a debuff which cancels out healing uh, received by all the members affected by it. So she can be really nasty against, for example, Regar. Uh, just when you want to land that key ancestral healing, Ana can put out the uh, dampening grenade or whatever it's called, uh, which would actually reduce that, that huge massive heal down to zero. Uh, so very powerful if it can be used at the right time time we're seeing a lot of support bands here that's three out of four bands going to the support pool uther gone oriel off the table morales gone as well which is a bit of a shame uh, that's a hero i would love to see infofox play as uh i've definitely seen that player use that champion especially the medevac dropship uh extremely well in prior games but it's not going to happen this time All right, Artanis and Vala. So one of the interesting things with Heroes of the Storm is the ch hero choices can really vary depending on which map uh, is chosen. So given that we are on Battlefield of Eternity, this is a map where uh, a character like Artanis is particularly useful um, because he's able to dish out tons of damage to those uh, immortals. So with both Vala and Artanis sitting there, they already have a decent damage base for that uh, looking at the other team now we saw first pick Zul'jin which is pretty interesting Zul'jin is a hero which saw quite a few changes in the last balance patch uh, basically a rework a lot of talents redone a lot of things changed baseline quest added 
And uh, Zul'jin has definitely seemed to benefit from those changes. So the first pick coming out here, uh, very interesting. This is also a hero who's really good at just dishing out persistent damage against something like an Immortal, not to mention the enemy players. Murden, Tyrande, and Stukov. Okay, so we are going to see a double support on the side of ODG. Uh, double support meta has been huge recently. A lot of teams have been making use of it. Uh, not all teams I have seen the last few games uh, that I've casted did not feature double supports, which I was a little surprised to see, but we are going to see it here at least on the side of OG. Now, Tyrande, uh, you know, sort of a support that goes Hello. very well Grand with a teammate. Sandwich. She doesn't have a lot of great healing, but she has great CC and damage. Uh, so Stukov to combo with that is a nice pick. And we are also going to see a double support on the other side, Malfurion picked up with Ana. Malfurion I'm in this interested in seeing as well. Enjoys. This is a hero that used to be seen all the time, was pretty much considered the best support for a long time. Um, saw a few changes a long time, well, maybe a month or two ago, um, nerfing Twilight Dream a little bit, taking Mana Regen away from that, taking away his cleanse, which is probably the main reason that he dropped off the map a little bit. Uh, but Garrosh and Zagara pick. So, wow, this is going to be a really interesting game, and... Uh, I'm interested to see how this is going to go. Garrosh is a hero that has seen a lot of success uh, lately in competitive play, at least in the games that I've been casting. I've seen so many people flipped over walls into the enemy team and annihilated. Um, typically, I often see Garrosh banned in the first round or first picked, if not banned. The one time I saw Garrosh go to a last pick like that, uh, that team ended up dominating. So, for... Reality Esports, they really hope that they can do it this time because, again, they need to win 2-0 in order to make playoffs. ODG just has to win one of these games. Zagara coming in last pick for ODG is interesting. This shows that they're really going to try to put a lot of split pressure on this map. Zagara is extremely good at soloing a lane, pushing it all the way in, and, you know, making it into other places using the Nidus network. All right, game Prepare number one in this series has begun. So, over on the side of Reality Esports, we've got Tay on Malfurion, Magnetic on Garrosh, Matt407 on Ana, Real Rad Dad playing Artanis, and Infofox gonna be playing Vala, it looks like. The Interesting switch of roles for this team. Um, over on the side of ODG, we've got I So Sneaky on Zul'jin, Calamity Five, Cat playing... Four, <laughs> Playing Stukov, we've got Crosby on Taronda and Kooks on that King Muradin. The battle has begun. And we see Zagara going up to that top lane by herself. No surprise there. Going to be met by Artanis and Anna. Going to be a 2-1 matchup in the top lane, which means it's going to be a 4-on-3 down bottom. We'll see how that all shakes out. Both supports sticking together for ODG. Trusting Zagara on her own up there, which is something you can do. Zagara is very good and very comfortable in that kind of scenario. If Real Rad Dad can land uh, the swap onto Soramir, that will be sad for him, but might even be able to survive that anyway. Looks like he's tried and failed a couple of times now. Bottom lane, as expected, the three-man team of Reality Esports having to hang a little bit back towards their base. Magnetic missing a pull there. Uh, but their objective here is basically just to survive, make sure they stay even, get that XP, and they have... Oh, nice pull onto Isosiki, gets thrown into the turrets and destroyed so quickly. There is that Garrosh that I've been talking about. Just, I mean, that everybody's been talking about, not just me. Everybody knows by now how ridiculous Garrosh can be. We saw him uh, miss the first pull, but the second one landed, and that's all it takes. You don't have to land all of them. You just have to land some. Magnetic trying again, missing. Are you ready, heroes? We approach your position. All right, Immortals going to be spawning in a few seconds here. And nothing I really happened in that first laning phase. No one got land. any real Demon. damage onto turrets. Everyone just soaked. Uh, we see a very slight XP. We actually, for reality, Magnetic got another nice pull. And a throw onto Kooks, who's trying to run out the back. It is Murden, so he probably will be able to. Crosby putting down, uh, sorry, uh, Calamity Cat putting down a nice silence field, forcing Tay out of the back of that fight. 
Kook's playing fairly far forward there, but jumps out of harm's way. Reality playing in a defensive position right now, looking to protect their immortal from damage as much as they can, while uh, their teammate Real Rad Dad just feeding the damage into that immortal. But in the meantime, Zul'jin was taken down. I've got to imagine that was another nice throw from Magnetic. All right, so Reality Esports currently has the advantage here. Going up now to focus all their damage on that immortal. Calamity Cat and Kooks trying to defend. Ana puts Murden to sleep, and the team just leaves him there. Nice root and murderization onto Stukov there. That's two kills, three kills already on the board for Reality Esports. This team is off to a nice start if they want to get this 2-0. Iso Sneaky, Crosby, and Kooks just trying to get some token damage onto that Immortal to at least reduce the shielding when it does come up. But that is Immortal number one going over to Reality Esports, and they are not even behind on the XP race here, probably thanks to those kills. Nice swap by Real Rad Dad. Puts Soramir right behind enemy lines. Going to be very difficult for uh, Soramir to get out of this, and that's going to be one dead cigar. Real Rad Dad, however, taking a lot of punishment from uh, ODG, but it's not going to be enough. Real Rad Dad doing a really great job there. First getting the swap and then moving forward into the enemy team to prevent any kind of help for that Cigara. That's going to be a 4v4 plus Immortal in the top lane while uh, Real Rad Dad goes back down to the bottom lane and gets some solo XP. Really nice lead now. We're seeing a full level lead at this point for Reality Esports. I don't think they're going to be able to get this top fourth, but they do get all the front defenses along with Manuel. Nice hook onto Kooks. I'm going to call it a hook, uh, but it's Murden. Nothing much comes of it. He gets away. All right, down in the bottom lane. Looks like uh, Soramir has decided to switch things up. Gone down to match Real Rad Dad, who's going to suddenly start to find himself being pushed in pretty hard. Everyone else still hanging around up top. Magnetic uh, looks like another pull onto the Murdo. Oh, double pull there. But uh, that groundbreaker is not going to lead to anything. ODG really needs to be careful uh, when Magnetic is anywhere near them. He's been pretty deadly with these pulls so far. Matt 407 heading down to the bottom lane to help out a real Rad Dad, who unfortunately does not land the swap there. That would have been a kill onto Stormier, but it might be anyway. Start the fight off with a sleep, get into position, and that is another kill going over to reality. 5-0 already this early into the game. Four, almost five minutes in, and we've got a pretty solid game coming out so far from Reality Esports. Looking to get an invade now onto that blue I think they should be able to pull that off. Taronda does not spot them. Might have seen Matt there. Looks like they have some idea that something's going on, but not going to be able to do much about it. Zul'jin... Landing here by himself. Infofox is going to come in around uh, behind. But Iso Sneaky goes back to the safety of his base. Take heed, mortals. I will arrive soon, and the Demon Lord is close behind. All right, Mortal's going to be coming up in five seconds now. And just looking at builds for a moment, no we can see that uh, Stukov is going for the... Uh, lurking Arm build, along with Vigorous Reuptake. Lurking Arm has seen uh, more popularity as far as the talents goes uh, ever since they kind of nerfed Stukov's... Um, what's the talent? The one that used to make his basic attacks range. All right, we've got teamfights going on. Uh, Real Dad a little bit split up, gets a swap onto Iso Sneaky. Kooks, though, follows it right in, and it looks like Tay, wow, just barely walks out of that alive. Real Rad Dad also very low, having to retreat... Magnetic does not land the Groundbreaker on anyone, so just a bit of AoE damage, and there is the first kill on the board now for ODG as Infofox goes down. All right, what's ODG going to do this with this uh, advantage they have? Leaving Zagara into the top lane as the other four members are coming down. Looks like they're just playing defense for a moment. Magnetic got a nice uh, pull onto Crosby, which was followed quickly by the Honest Sleep. Kooks got stuck in a root there, but uh, Meridian is just going to walk away. Geronda Stun not hitting anyone. All five members still alive for ODG here. Ooh, that is a poor dead Artanis as the stun was followed up really nicely. Kooks getting very low, not to be careful. Down to, uh, wow, got down to 30 health there. But Zagara pays the price once again for uh, leaving Garrosh in this draft. 
Groundbreaker goes down to Koontz, but nothing much to follow up. The health bars are starting to get a little bit low for Reality Esports. They're going to have to be a bit careful here. And they are. All right. Half damage already gone from the Blue Immortal. So uh, despite Reality, you know, losing out on that whole exchange as far as kills goes, they definitely came out ahead as far as the objective goes. Tay going to be a little bit late getting back here on that Malfurion, but he should be here just in time, and here he is now, healing up our friend Matt407. Immortal is just kind of shooting useless balls of energy at each other. I don't know why that doesn't hurt, and why they keep doing it since it doesn't, but Magnetic and the rest of the crew going in now aggressively against this Blue Immortal. They're just going to finish this thing really fast by the looks of it. Working Arm splits up Reality a little bit, but it looks like it's the blue health bars that are dropping fairly quickly. Matt 407 having to walk away on that Ana, but uh, no one able to get the final kills. Now, Magnetic is in a lot of danger, but that Garrosh trait keeping him alive very well. Matt 407 backs out as well. Tyrande stun lands a lot of silences from that uh, Lurking Arm, but Immortal has already been killed, so this team fight is just kind of to see what kind of pressure is going to be left up. Iso Sneaky goes down, real grab dad, not landing any kind of swap at the end there, but that's a 5v4 plus Immortal yet again for Reality Esports. And to top it all to off, they Hannah. have now hit level 10. This is going to be a very powerful push. All five members deciding to stay with the Immortal. Zagara deciding to stay top, deciding, you know what, not much I can do down bottom. Might as well get some counter push and some counter structure damage. I think it's a good pull. Speaking of pulls, Magnetic getting the pull. Oh my goodness. The throw onto Crosby, followed up by the Roost, followed up by the Reign of Vengeance. That was just a disaster uh, for ODG as another one bites the dust. That's three now dead on ODG. 5v2 on the field. How far can they go? Reality might decide to even get a keep here. Zagara goes for that Nidus Network as level 10 has been picked up now for ODG. Uh, and Zagara is still, though, going to hang out and just counter push. I don't know if she's going to be able to get the keep by herself, and that's another throw. Iso Sneaky thrown into the danger zone and wiped away off this map. Murden has popped the Avatar. He's not going to go down anytime soon. Real Rad Dad getting a little magnetic, a little bit low, but they're not too worried. Both supports there to help them out. That Immortal frontlining for them, and that is going to be a keep down already. And they're just going to keep pushing into the core. Soromir deciding it is time to get back home now. A lot of damage already going down. Shielding all the way gone from that core. Down to 75% already. Infofox, though, going to go down. A lot of people about to go down from uh, Reality Esports. That's Artanis gone. Magnetic's going to fall next. And that is a failed core push by Reality Esports. They almost did it. They got the core down to 32%, but it's not enough. And this is really going to open things up for ODG. Sormir never stopped pushing top. Well, did for a little bit, but quickly went back. And that might even be a keep trade, which is an incredible uh, turn of fortunes for ODG. And extremely well played by them. All right, Infofox and Matt caught up to Sormi here. The sleep let everyone catch up, and that is one dead Zagara. All right, they do keep their keep uh, alive here or standing, which is really, really important for Reality Esports because if they had lost that keep, it would have been devastating. But they didn't, so they do have the keep advantage. They still have a very, very small XP advantage, but it has basically been wiped out uh, by that final team fight that we saw won by ODG. Iso Sneaky going to try to get some damage down in this bottom lane while he has the chance. Top Mercenary Camp taken by ODG. They did a good job uh, getting some benefit out of that flipped team fight. Still that Mercenary Camp sitting down there in the bottom. It looks like uh, that's going to be that fort destroyed now by Reality Esports. ODG taking this chance to grab that mercenary camp before it's stolen away from them. Good work from them. All right, the game has somewhat reset here, but the thing is, the Immortals are spawning in five seconds, and ODG has to worry about their core. Now, thankfully, they have two mercenary camps pushing in the bottom lane, so they should be able to leave that alone for the moment, which is really nice for them. All right, a lot of things happening already. We saw Reign of Vengeance go down. We saw the Tyrande uh, Starfall already uh, activated. Zul'jin's ultimate ability on cooldown. Artanis also used his heroic ability. So a lot of things already burned. No immortal damage 
has really been uh, activated yet. It looks like Reality is just going down and clear out these mercenaries. Uh, smart play by them. ODG taking the time to put some damage onto that red All right, everyone crowding down around the Blue Mortal now. We've got a Sleep just sitting there. And then a taunt to follow it up onto Sormir. Magnetico getting really, really low. Wow, he's been so close to death for so long, but that's Garrosh for you. But even Garrosh cannot stay alive for all of that damage. Matt 407 goes down. Or sorry, Infobox goes down. That's two members on each side. Already killed Iso Sneaky, about to follow his team into the grave. No! Can Tay land one more Moonfire onto him? And he does. That's a nice kill from Malfury. Infofox just two 1v2ing, manages to get the kill, uh, the trade kill there. Tay versus Crosby now. Tyrande versus Malfury and a lover's quarrel. And they just cannot bear to fight each other, so they each back away. That was a bloodbath of a team fight. Four members dying on reality, four members dying on ODG. Only the lovers themselves, Malfurion and Tyrande, left alive. Both of them going to try to deal whatever um, little damage they can to these Immortals. Now, Malfurion at least has gone for the Moonfire build. Uh, so that's going to help with that damage. Uh, however, the uh, Moon Burn quest has not yet been completed. So unfortunately, his uh, Moonfire damage on the Immortals is still relatively weak. Um, but it looks like it will be the Blue Immortal dying first. ODG arriving now to try to push Reality off. Real Radiant goes for a swap, does not land it. And the team is backing away. ODG doing a nice job pushing them off of that Immortal. Kooks not landing the stun. All those little Banelings mostly just missing. Alright, keep in mind, while this kind of impasse is happening, this does advantage Reality Esports, because look at all those red little minions on the minimap heading in towards that damaged core. ODG basically needs to get a full team wipe here. They cannot just sit here defending forever, because if they do this, they will lose their base. Looks like Reality Esports is fully aware of this. They are not going too crazy uh, with the initiation. They're quite happy to stall this out. Nice three-man stun from Toronto lands onto the members of Reality. No follow-up, though, and the poke is just very slowly but surely bringing that Immortal down. Magnetic deciding to go for it, pushing Iso Sneaky into the middle of his team. Rain of Vengeance lands, and that is a dead Zul Jin. Root lands onto Soramir now, and that might be another one. Infobox still getting quite low. Reality needs to be careful here. They've got a lot of things going for them right now, but Soramir goes down as well. That's five versus three on the map. What's going to happen now? Kooks. Drops down despite the Avatorm. Crosby going to go down very shortly thereafter, and it's going to be Calamity Cat after that. This is going to be a full team wipe. Reality Esports clearing the table, wiping the ODG off the board and grabbing the Immortal. Already they've got Catapults and Minions pushing in the bottom lane. The core is already dropping. They might not even have to show up to win this game. 26% is where the core is at. Only Zul'jin left alive right now and that is it reality esports keeping their playoff dreams alive remember they need to 2-0 this series they've got step one in the bag that's game one over to reality now odg remember is still in this so everything is going to come down to game number two well played by reality esports a dominating victory for game number one and we'll see if they can keep it up for game number two. We're going to take a short break, but we will be right back with more Nexus Gaming Series right after this. Don't touch that dial.
All right, welcome back to the Nexus Gaming Series. Uh, I am Bludgeon, and you are watching the tail end of the Division A regular season. So, if you're just tuning in, we've got a great game for you coming up. This is my favorite kind of esports or any kind of sports game where the, the result matters for both teams, and it's very, very clear. Whoever wins this game goes to playoffs. It's that simple. Coming into this match, ODG only needed to win one of the two games to guarantee their spot in eighth place, therefore making it to playoffs. Reality Esports, on the other hand, in order for them to clinch that playoff spot, they needed to win all two games. In other words, both of those games. And they started things off perfectly with a dominating victory over ODG on uh, Battlefield of Eternity in game number one. Game number two is uh, going to be on Infernal Shrines. This was the map selected by Reality Esports. A uh, little inside information for you during the map ban and pick phase. Uh, the map ban that ODG went for was Towers of Doom, uh, which I can tell you was actually going to be Reality Esports uh, pick My format. So that was a great map yours. ban from ODG. And instead, it's going to be on Infernal Shrines. This is where the battle for playoffs is going to happen. And looking at the bans, Garrosh has been banned. I think that's a smart thing to do. We saw how deadly Magnetic was with that Garrosh in game number one, getting so many clutch picks. So many kills were generated from that Garrosh, uh, as well as being able to survive with that Garrosh trait, getting out of the team fights with very low health. I'm not checking in. Uh, the Chogal banned out yet again by Reality Esports. So, uh, hey, it worked for them by banning it out in game number one. Uh, so might as well stick with it. First pick, Sonya over for ODG. And we see the Ana and Malthael now coming out for Reality. Uh, kind of interesting that they banned the Chogal and still picked the Malthael. Um, but I guess, you know, they just like Malthael regardless of whether Chogal is in the mix. Uh, now feels someone who does a lot of damage oh, to tanks. Okay, Arthas, Lucio picked up. Uh, Arthas and Lucio are a really nice combo for a team because Arthas has an AoE slow, so he's going to make any enemies that he's close to slower than usual. Lucio, conversely, provides an AoE uh, speed boost to all of his allies. So the speed movement, the movement speed differential between friendlies and enemies is... Uh, amped up quite a bit with Lucio and Arthas together. And Arthas does not have any real way to move himself around to get in range uh, for a Howling Blast or for uh, the AoE slow, so Lucio can get him in there, as well as keeping him alive to a degree. Uh, normally I expect to see two supports when you see a Lucio, but not always. I definitely have seen Lucio solo support. Um, so we'll see, but I, uh, based on how ODG drafted in the last game and how things typically go, I do expect to see a second support. And it looks like Reality does as well, having banned out Lieutenant Morales for the second game in a row. So that's the same bans for both games from Reality. Chogal, Lieutenant Morales. And Uther being banned out once again uh, by ODG. They do not want to give that over to Reality Esports. And we're going to get to see what the rest of this composition is going to look like. So they do not have access to the garage this time. We'll see how that changes things. Uh, the Ana still there. Probably going to see another support going along with that. But Reality definitely taking their time here. Uh, once again, everything is on this game. This game is for all the marbles. As uh, Who said that in chat? Verino. Uh, quite a while ago, it said last game for all the marbles, and that's right. So everybody wants marbles, and you know what? It's not enough to have some marbles. It's not good enough to play for a couple of marbles, one marble, six marbles. Just play for all the marbles, you know what I mean? If you're betting for money, yeah, fine, five bucks, ten bucks, you don't have to have all of it. But if you're just getting marbles, you want them all. And so uh, with that said, we can see Stukov and Vala locked in for Reality Esports. Stukov was played in game number one by ODG, this time taken away by reality so it's going to be an honest stukov team i think that's a really nice support combination you've got a lot of uh disruption there anna made really great use of the sleep in that last game um it's a quite a long cc as long as no one disrupts it 
used it really well in team fights to just take someone out of the way uh, and used it quite well also to set up kills landing asleep onto an enemy player giving the teammates time to catch up and surround it and then just you know murderize it so good job there and the vala out once again so so far 50 percent same composition coming out of reality whereas uh every pick is different for odg so odg obviously did not love how that last game went and they're definitely mixing things up now we are also going to a different map infernal shrines is not the same as battlefield of eternity although the objectives are kind of similar and they're both diablo themed maps the difference with infernal shrines is instead of putting all of your damage onto one huge immortal you're trying to put damage in aoe against a whole bunch of little poor helpless skeleton men so that explains the sonya first pick she's extremely good at that arthas as well aoe damage uh good with that as well so we saw the cassia and the oriole as the final two picks for odg uh cassia is someone who is able to blind enemy heroes someone who's very resistant to attack damage uh for example what vala might be doing um, but not a lot of blind synergy with the rest of the team and we saw the Oriole coming up as the second support which was banned away from them last game and the Diablo coming out as the tank for reality esports really interesting here so tell me in the chat what do you think of these team lineups who has the advantage on this map is it ODG or is it reality esports? Let me know what you think. Keep in mind, we are on a two-minute delay here, so uh, I won't uh, I won't be able to respond to what you're saying for a couple minutes after you say it. But let me know. All right, game two about to start, and here we are. ODG is going to be Soromir on Sonya. Crosby playing Oriel. Kooks zooming around on that Arthas that looks too much like Kerazim for my liking. Calamity Cat going to be roller laser blading around on Lucio. And Iso Sneaky playing Cassia over on the side of Reality Esports. It's going to be Matt407 on Ana. InfoFox playing Vala. Tay on that Octopus Pirate Stukov. Real Rad Dad playing the uh, God of Justice. Malthiel, I forget what he is. And Magnetic playing Diablo. All members of both teams coming towards this middle lane. Magnetic got stunned up a little bit there. Got rooted as well. Got some damage. Got blinded. A lot of punishment onto Magnetic, but gets a nice flip onto Iso Sneaky. Some follow up damage from the team, but nothing too serious. Uh, looking at the talent choices, we see that. Um, Real Rad Dad, sorry, Tay, playing that Stukov, has decided to change things up a little bit. Uh, Kooks got pushed into the enemy team by that Diablo, but as you can see, it's just not quite leading to kills. So it's a similar idea for Magnetic this game. The Garrosh got banned away, deciding to go for a hero with somewhat similar abilities and as far as putting an enemy teammate uh, into the middle of the danger zone, but Diablo not quite as good at that as Garrosh can be. But going back to the Stukov, different level 1 talent, going for the uh, Fetid Touch there rather than the Lurking Arm uh, expansion. Bit of a split from reality, Magnetic going back to drink from that uh, mana well. Soramir going to hang out here in the top lane, see if they can get some kind of gank onto real Radad as Crosby has been left uh, to solo lane on Oriel. I guess it's very thematic. You've got the uh, two Anjuris Council members going out for each other here, Oriel and Malfiel. A lot of Diablo here is being used on the Diablo map. Over on ODG, Sonya, Cassia, Oriel. That's three out of five members associated with Diablo. Over on the side of reality, eh, it's only Diablo and Malfiel. So if we're going for just thematic wins, it looks like ODG has this game in the bag. All right. Shrine activated up in the top lane, and it's ODG who are there to capitalize. Fireteam says, would like to see Tassadar instead of Oriel. Uh, Malfail level 7 healing reduction is going to shred. 
Yeah, interesting there. We'll see how this Oriole uh, works out for Crosby. All right, both teams looking to... Looks like they're both going to contest this top thing. Magnetic gets a nice flip of ice with Sneaky, but no follow-up. Everybody healed basically back up there. The Skeleton Men so far being dominated by ODG. 22 to 6. Uh, Magnetic gets a nice push onto Sorbier, but it's really not going to do a whole lot. Sleep interrupts. Nice damage there put down. Magnetic going in. Uh, Sorm, you're going to have to back out for the moment until this team can heal him up, or maybe you can get some uh, juice out of that. Well, a lot of damage there. Iso Sneaky getting very low and slept and flipped and killed. First Blood going over to Reality Esports. Four versus three in the top lane. They do now have control of this shrine area. Both members in the bottom lane coming up to support now. Kooks on his way, going to arrive first. So that's going to make it back to a 4v4. Malfield deciding not to follow. Uh, I don't know. I think actually ODG is going to be able to finish this off. The decision to leave Malfield down bottom. Uh, calculated by Reality Esports. Deciding they would rather have the, uh, I suppose, the extra soak at the moment. Giving over that Arcane Punisher to ODG. We'll see how that decision pays off for them. Verino in chat says, Anna Malfield, best combo ever. They can 2v5. Well, we're going to see... If that is true, uh, they were not quite able to do it in that map. Kooks, uh, very close to Magnetic there. Calamity Cat just walking in, perhaps deciding to be the Sacrificial Lamb, knowing he can just run away, but taking a lot of damage on the way out. Daddy is Taddy, putting 100% confidence into Reality Esports. Dragon King Hots deciding to wait until Calamity picks a talent. Well, Calamity has picked a talent, so I'm waiting to see what your bet is, my friend. Oh, no, we've got a pause. Waiting to find out what the reason for that is. All right, well, these pauses do give us a chance to take a little bit of a break, take a little bit of a breath, and take a look at what is happening in this game uh looks like one of the players has perhaps some sort of a issue but it looks like it has been resolved all right we're gonna get this game back up and running for you And we're back. All right, nice short pause. So actually there was no time for reflection, but that is A-OK -okay because I prefer the action. Level seven picked up by Reality Esports. Taking a quick look at the talents, Vala is going for that ever popular hungering arrow build. We've got Diablo going for uh, increased range on shadow charge and armor when he shadow charges. So going for a nice shadow charge build there. Uh, going for the soul shield. So spell armor per soul for Diablo believing that most of his damage is going to be come from, coming from uh, ability sources. Sormir going straight in onto InfoFox, but unfortunately not able to get out of there as Tay got a nice, uh, actually Matt 407, sorry, got a really nice sleep there, uh, allowing InfoFox to get out of dodge. Mercenaries pushing in the top lane, pushing in the mid lane, uh, mirrored on both sides there. Teams have kind of split up across the board. So, that first... Uh, Infernal didn't really do a whole lot, as the first Infernals just typically don't tend to do that much. So no big deal for reality that they lost it. But this next shrine probably will matter more, and since it's in mid, it'll be a lot easier for both teams to contest. So we're going to expect some heavy action here. Both teams at the same level, same talent here. Uh, no really big advantage either way. But nicely timed mercenary pickup from reality is going to split uh, the pressure and split the focus of ODG coming into this objective. ODG already getting a big head start on these minions, already up to 15 skeleton man kills. Uh, Reality Esports at the moment not really looking to do much, but nice work from Magnetic to catch out Kooks, who just basically walks away. We saw the Ana healing uh, reduction go down, but doesn't really matter. 
People still fighting in the middle of that Skeleton Pit Storm here, just killing Skeletons at the same time as damaging the enemy team. Magnetic gets a nice push and stun onto Kooks, who does not die after all of that. Nice job, ODG, keeping Kooks alive. And a lot of low health bars all around. Silences go down. Nice shadow charge and flip from Diablo, but it's going to be a one for one. Who is going to be next to fall? Double root there on Infofox and Matt 407 as they chase Reality Esports out there. But guess what? That is another Punisher going over to ODG. That's two in a row for them. Reality Esports uh, looks like they're going to be able to take it down before they lose that fourth, but they are going to lose the front wall. All right, how far is ODG going to push this? Kook's going very far forward, silenced by Tato as soon as he got near. Into Fox, putting a little bit of return damage on the way out. All right, level 10 has now been picked up by Reality. Going to be picked up very soon as well from ODG. Looking at Reign of Vengeance from Vala, Apocalypse from Diablo, Tormented Souls from Malthale, Flailing Swipe from Stukov, and Nano Boost from Ana. Going to be interesting to see how that Nano Boost works out. And already we've got another team fight in the bottom lane. Uh, 5v4, but Arthas brings in Syndragosa. Flailing Swipe already activated. Stormier now coming down from the flanking position, deciding not to go for the flank. Iso Sneaky gets flipped, put into stasis. Apocalypse goes down, stuns up three or four members of ODG, but it doesn't matter as the return damage is huge. Real Rad Dad having to back out, still alive for the moment. Everyone looks like they're going to survive this fight. Infofox, though. Wow. Really close team fight there. Damage back and forth on both teams. A lot of members extremely close to death at multiple points throughout that team fight. No one ends up dropping. This is a very close game. The winner of this game will go to playoffs. The stakes uh, do not get much higher than this as far as single games goes. Of course, the winner of this team will have to go up against Team Cynics, the undefeated Division A team. Uh, so it's going to be a tough matchup for whichever this team, uh, whichever team manages to get there. But still, you want to make it, and you never know what can happen when you do. Shrine now active on the bottom side. Malthale heading up to the top, so not going to get down there to contest. It looks like Reality Esports just lost a Stukov, and they're going to lose an Infofox as well. That's two kills picked up from ODG right before the ejective spawns. Really great timing for them. They're going to take this opportunity to grab those mercenaries as well. Heading up now to activate that shrine, and I don't think Reality can do much to contest this. So we're just going to see Real Rad Dad stay up in that top lane. Magnetic stay in that middle lane, try to just get some soak while they can. Uh, but ODG can afford to match, so Iso Sneaky going up to clear out those minions. Everybody collapsing down here towards this bottom lane. Magnetic, Real Rad Dad, Matt 407, Tay. And Infofox now all going to be right here. Cassia, though, nowhere to be found, so it will be a 5v4. The sleep happened onto Calamity Cap, and nothing really uh, followed up on that. Hungering Arrow does some nice damage to ODG. That's going to give Reality a chance to wipe out some Skeleton Men here. But Cassia now about to get back down into the thick of things here. We'll see whether Reality can stand their ground. Kooks gets pushed. Apocalypse gets activated. Uh, Lucio gets killed. Matt 407, though, on the opposite side gets killed as well. It's a one-for-one one so far. Stasis comes out, and Crosby is going to be the next to die. That's a two-for-one right now in favor of Reality Stormier going back into the safety of the base. Real Rad Dad having to be very careful. Iso Sneaky going to take him down by the looks of things. Oh, my goodness, Real Rad Dad. You're playing with fire. Okay. So even though Reality came out ahead as far as the kills goes, yet... Again, ODG has gotten a Punisher. That is three Punishers in a row. You know, pretty soon this is going to be a problem if, if Reality Esports cannot stop the next Punisher. But that was a really nice setup by ODG. Getting two kills going into that uh, objective phase really set them up for success there. The Punisher still sitting on full health. All five members of Reality Esports are here. Punisher jumps over the wall. Tay running very far forward on that Stukov. Manages to escape. 
Punisher is dead, so the keep should be safe, but they do lose all of the defensive structures in front of it. So that is currently an exposed keep, uh, which ODG is going to have access to for the rest of this game. Real Rad Dad just clearing out some minions in that mid lane. Going to get rooted by Kooks, but uh, not going to matter too much. There was an attempt to steal that mercenary camp from ODG, but it looks like Reality is going to defend this. Tato goes down. Iso Sneaky just hunting him down and killing him on that cast again. It's going to be Magnetic dropping next. They've got two kills already. They're going to steal this mercenary camp. Things are starting to look pretty good for ODG. They have now taken the lead. They are a full level and a bit ahead of Reality Esports. Three Infernals in a row. Mercenaries all over the place. Pushing in top. Pushing in bottom. Pushing in mid. Reality Esports is on the back foot. Can they come back in this game? Just about two levels down. Still two members dead. Stukov is back. Val going to be coming back in just a second, but they are going to lose this mid fort for sure. The question is, will they lose anything else? Real Rad Dad activating Tremendous Souls, but Lucio activates the sound barrier in response. Nice counterplay there from the Lucio. No one dying on either side. The fort, though, is destroyed, so that's a win for ODG. Sleep goes down onto Kooks, followed up with the uh, Pustule, as well as a whole bunch of other things, but Arthas just walks away. Magnetic, potentially going to get a flip onto Cassia, but no. Crosby doing a nice job, just lashing him right out of there. Reality Esports going uh, pretty deep into enemy territory here, getting a nice isolation onto Kooks, and I think that is finally going to be the Arthas dying. However, the remaining members of Reality pretty low, finally getting healed up by that Stukov, who has completed that quest, by the way, so that's a really nice... Uh... Okay, the Stasis goes down to protect against the Apocalypse Magnetic, though, getting really low. Sormir in the middle of the enemy team. Stukov pushes him away with that flailing arm. Nice disengage by Tay to save his teammates there. 16 about to be picked up by ODG, and that is a talent level advantage as the objective comes up. However, for the first time in this game, Reality Esports is the first one to start killing those skeleton men, racking up uh, the skulls for this objective, but ODG is right here. Arthas is a little bit behind. It's gonna take him a bit to get up here. Real Rad Dad uh, just backing out now, so it looks like Reality might be giving this up yet again. They're really afraid of the team fight power presented by ODG. They are down a talent level, uh, so perhaps that is wise. But I've got to, I've got to think it's not too good to be giving up, you know, infernal after infernal after infernal. But hey, if you think you can't win, then it's just what you got to do. Take your advantages elsewhere on the map, and that's what reality is doing. Grabbing that top mercenary camp while they can. Vala going down to grab that bottom mercenary camp. So, reality esports making the calculated decision not to contest the objective and instead just run around the map doing what they can. But they end up not actually able to complete that mercenary camp capture in the top lane. So a bit of a failure there, and a really nice read from ODG to go up there and interrupt and steal that mercenary camp. So that's going to be just extra pressure. Reality really did not want now. Infernal and all five members of ODG coming straight into the mid lane. They're going to take down this keep wall very quickly. The question will be, can they get the keep afterward? That Infernal, still very healthy. Excuse me, still very healthy. Uh, Magnetic got him to kind of chase away the other way, but ODG putting a lot of damage already onto that keep, and I do not think Reality is going to be able to do much about it. Infobox getting stunned up by the Immortal and dropped by ODG, unfortunately for uh, Reality Esports. The Flailing Swipe came out a little bit too late, not able to save his teammate, and that is a, a very powerful Heroic already down. ODG onto the core, Immortal still alive, still hassling Reality Esports. Uh, ODG, though, not going to push for the win just yet satisfied by getting that keep down they will walk away take this advantage and put it in the bank Whew. all right looking back over to the chat here We've got uh, Verino once again commenting, the Lucio is make or break. Uh, so far, the Lucio has done a good job of countering the mouth heal engage with the sound barrier. Verino saying if the barrier gets stopped, they're going to get insta-killed. Yep, 
We'll see if uh, Reality can manage to do that. Infobox very far forward there. Be careful on that Valor, my friend. Sleep onto the Storm Mirror. Nice stun against the wall. Reality Esports deciding they want to do this. Apocalypse activated. Catches two members. That's going to be a Stasis going down. And it's, in fact, Diablo who dies first. Stormir, though, dies. It's a one-for-one. One. Iso Sneaky about to go down next. Real Radad in the middle of everybody. Kooks dies. Crosby about to die next. Reality Esports is on the warpath. Four members killed on the side of ODG. Four members alive on the side of Reality Esports. How much can they push? 40 seconds are the death timers. Still down a level. Still down a Diablo. Mercenaries Red pushing in that top four. What will Reality Esports do? Not a lot of mercenaries to do uh, to capture here. So, Val is just going to go clear out those mercenaries in the top lane. The and the timing on this shrine is... It's going to give Reality a bit of a chance to uh, get a couple of Skeleton Man kills, but it's basically going to activate at the same time as ODG respawns. Reality, unfortunately, really not able to get a whole lot done with that huge advantage they got out of that team fight. Unfortunately, there just were no big objectives to take, and they did not feel confident uh, trying to push in a keep. So they're going to see how many skeletons they can kill before ODG catches up. This is going to be the team fight that could decide this game. If Reality loses another Infernal, I think it's going to be big trouble for them. On the other hand, if ODG loses it, they can still easily come back. They've got lots of structures still left in this game. Flailing Swipe. Already used by Stukov. That's a big heroic down. Malthiel waiting for uh, the Tormented Souls to come back. Diablo has just now gotten the Apocalypse back up off of cooldown. 26 Skeleton Men killed on the side of Reality Esports. Only 14 right now for ODG, but they have taken control of that zone. Stormir, you're going to do a really nice job just whirlwinding those things down. And it looks like the both teams right now are focusing on the Skeleton Men. Only eight more need to be picked up by Reality Esports in order to get it. But Soramir and the rest of ODG are not going to give up so easily. Only four more Skeletons need to go over to Reality Esports and it looks like they will do it. All right, first Infernal finally picked up by Reality Esports and this was a big one. The problem for them is take a look at this mid lane. Look at all of these minions and catapults pushing in mid. Look at all the minions pushing bottom. Reality Esports really needs to get the most possible out of this Immortal because very soon they're going to have to go back and defend their core. So I think they're hoping they can just get a keep and back away. We'll see if they can or if they send somebody back to deal with this mess currently sitting on the core. All five members of Reality sticking together. All five members of ODG sticking together. Reality Esports deciding to just leave it to the minions for now, perhaps a wise move because they really, if they can get this keep, that would be a huge swing. A really nice uh, release valve on the pressure. Everything currently getting focused into uh, Kooks. Tay using that infernal, uh, sorry, that swipe to push everybody away. Stormir though goes down. That's a Sonya dead. Infernal has been killed. Looks like Reality will be able to take out this keep. Kooks just kind of trying to defend a little bit. Oriel puts his sleep. How much further is Reality going to push here? They get a nice push onto Kooks. Looks like they might even get a kill onto Arthas. That's another person dead. ODG could be in a lot of trouble. Only three members left alive to defend the core. And Reality Esports putting everything they've got into it. Magnetic activating the Apocalypse. Not going to catch anybody. Real Rad Dad trying to get a kill onto Iso Sneaky. Calamity Cat looking around trying to scare people away. Iso Sneaky though goes into the grave. Calamity Cat has to run away the core. Down to 20, sorry, 40%, but look at the red core. It's dying too, 24%. And it's going to be a core race, but it is Reality Esports coming out with the 2-0 victory against ODG. That's Reality Esports going into the playoffs. Fantastic. What an extremely exciting series. Both matches really well played by both teams. That last one really was going both ways. ODG uh, in control for most of that, that game, getting the first three Immortals in a row. But Reality Esports never giving up, hanging on, biding their time, defending when they could, and coming up with clutch team fight victories towards the end of the game, allowing them to get that final key in Infernal. 
All right, we're going to be coming up to you with an interview with Real Rad Dad from the Victorious Reality Esports in just a moment. Don't go anywhere. Hi. Hey, how's it going, Real Rad Dad? What's up? <laughs> so you guys did it. You had to get the two zero to make it to playoffs, and you pulled it off. How do you feel? Uh, a little bit frazzled right now. That was oh. a hell of a second game. That really was a hell of a second game. We saw yeah. OPG kind of had uh, you guys on the ropes for quite a significant portion of it, grabbing the first three Immortals. Uh, was it yeah. kind of an intentional... I mean, I once you saw that they were getting it, you did a good job kind of splitting up, defending, grabbing what waves you could. Was What was your strategy in that game as far as the objectives was concerned? Well, um, I was playing Malphail, um, and I took on a Pale Horse at level 1 because I knew we had a weaker early game. So I figured if I could, you know, have the extra mount speed, I could double soak a little bit during the objectives. Because, you know, we didn't really expect to, like, go hard on the early ones just because they didn't have, like, a super crazy push comp until 10 when they took <laughs> fucking Cindergosa <laughs> as well. But but um, didn't expect the Cindergosa either. But um, that was kind of our strat, just post 10, go hard with the nano boost Tormented Souls. Yeah, I mean, we definitely saw a couple instances where you, you, you were just right in the middle of the enemy team uh, dealing death this way and that. Um, where would you say the turning point was in that game? I think uh, that fight near their bruiser camp, like the hard uh, top left camp, when we were just going to try and gank because we knew someone would rotate that way. But they all kind of ended up committing, and then Tay got a really solid silence and interrupted the the sound barrier. So I just went in hard with the nano boost, and we were able to wipe all except for Lucio. And I think that was what turned it around. Because, yeah. like you said, we were against the ropes that entire game until then. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you were doing a really good job defending well and taking down the Infernals pretty quickly. Um, but that definitely was a big swing in the fight. The interesting thing was after you got that, you know, four for one team fight, there wasn't really much for you to do with that time. Yeah, we just took top for it. <laughs> just try and get some XP, free XP. So tell me a bit about what you were talking about after that fight. What kind of stuff were you planning? Um, well, the objective, like we took top for it, and then we were just going to go soak and take what camps we could. And then the objective spawned, so I just went back for full mana. And we were just kind of going to poke around the objective because they were about to be up at the same time the objective was. And we noticed that we were at like 25 and they were at 11, and we were like, we can take this Punisher. So we kept like just kind of being like not super aggressive, but staying in, you know. And we ended up getting that Punisher and immediately killing... Sonya, I think? It was yeah. it was either Sonya or Arthas. Like right away during that and so we were like It was Sonya, awesome. I believe. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah, which was significant. And you, you got know. the Arthas not too long after that. Right. Yeah, we got the Sonya and then we were like five man push, like there's gonna be cat as mid with there's a huge wave bot, but we can clear the bot wave so it doesn't really get help. And we just need to push hard, you know. Because if we back, you know, there we lose the push and 
that just makes the game go on longer and we risk losing more, you know? I was really so. curious to see if you would send someone back because your core was actually getting wrecked. Uh, oh, yeah. Minions. Oh, yeah. I think it got down to like 24% by the time you killed uh, the enemy core. So it really could have gone much differently had you not managed to get uh, a couple of those kills at the end there. Were you talking about it? Were you thinking, oh, should we send somebody back? Or were you just all on board with this is it, do or die? Well, after we killed the fort, there were, there were, and like heading towards the keep, we, there were Katas on, but the Katas had just died and our core was at like 64%. And so we were like, well, we have a little bit more time. Break the sidewall, get a couple picks. If we can get a couple picks, we can just end. And so we got in, killed the Arthas, killed the keep, and then started kind of like... We weren't as decisive there. Like, we, we kind of moseyed over to the core after that, you know? And I think we could have ended quicker. But, you know, it's that's nerves. And, like, <laughs> seeing our core go down to the cat is... Sure. Plus, like, I don't know if you know this, but... It's been talked about a little bit. Our team has literally never practiced. Wow. So we're not like all super comfortable with each other, but you know, like when we're all say, friends. When you say you've never practiced, like what does that mean? You never play as five together? Yeah, never. Not once. Not once, except for <laughs> matches. Fantastic. Like, me and Matt are the only ones that really consistently play the game. And then Mag and Tay pretty much just play our games. And Fox will get on like twice a week <laughs> well you're setting a very bad example for anyone watching this perhaps i should edit this out and uh yeah probably probably it's not a good thing <laughs> <laughs> but especially if out. we're like in today but you know it plus like out. we're friends with odg so it's all in good fun you know what i mean well, like we were bantering back and forth and stuff yeah the chat was definitely active throughout that whole match uh, all right, so talk to me a little bit now uh going into playoffs obviously you're gonna have to face team cynics which uh went undefeated uh, at least so far right. in the regular season. So yeah. I assume you're still not going to practice for that? You know, <laughs> we talked about it if we made playoffs <laughs> to try, you know, like to actually have like a practice or a scrim or two. I don't know if it's going to happen though. <laughs> you know, it's like, every, like I'm a, you know, I my name's not fake. Like I'm actually a dad. I have a full-time job. Mag and Tay, full-time jobs and they play soccer a lot. And then, you know, Fox is going to school and all that shit. So we, I, I don't know. Like, we'll try for sure. And, like, when we play the game, we're not going to fuck around. But I don't expect to be next by any means. Well, probably. They are a great team. Absolutely. They're a fantastic team. Um, yeah. but, hey, you never know, right? Yeah. Well, we'll see. <laughs> we will I mean, see. when we played them, like, our match against them, we definitely lost. But I feel like. You know, it's it's possible, but highly un. Like they're gonna have to be off, and we're gonna have to be on. It's not gonna be like, you know, I, if it's if we're like both in there mentally the same, I don't think we'll win. Tbh. <laughs> well, I'm sure you'll have a lot of people rooting for the underdogs in that match. So uh, good luck to you. Thank you very much for the interview, and congratulations on the 2-0 heading into playoffs. Yeah, thanks for casting, man. Appreciate it. My pleasure. All right, that was Real Rad Dad. I am Bludgeon. We're going to close out the night there. Thanks to everyone for watching. Thanks to both teams for putting on a great show tonight, and we'll see you next time on the Nexus Gaming Series.